Hey everybody, I'm Blitz. Welcome back to Jurassic World Electric Boogaloo 2, the electric dinosaur on the loose. I just made that up. So you might remember last time we played this game, we had a little bit of fun with these beautiful little Jeeps. We drove them on this nice scenic highway all the way up to the lagoon. And when I mean up to the lagoon, I mean up into the lagoon with their friends. <laughs> oh, something satisfying about breaking games. Also, there were comments in the last video like, those are not dinosaurs. Those are aquatic reptiles. I, I seriously, you're gonna, you're gonna go that far? It's dinosaur. It's a magical Leo Plerodon, Charlie. It's gotta go to Candy Mountain. Now I had an idea. Oh, this Mosasaur looks really cool, though. Sorry, this aquatic reptile looks really cool. And those aquatic fish also look cool. He just bonked his head directly into that pillar. That was dumb. My idea was to play with the other kind of enclosures. Not the lagoons, but the aviaries. If we just find a nice flat area to slap it down and then throw in a hatchery or six hatcheries, we could have a little bit of fun with the flying boys. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the names of these flying reptiles, if you know what I mean. But here's a pterodon and a mardadarctalarlalus. Do these ones say they eat humans? I feel like I feel like these eat humans. No, they, they eat fish. I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if we can put humans in the water and pretend they're fish. <laughs> Which one's the most expensive? You are two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Let's make you slightly more dangerous. Combat, yes, 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 yes. Defense, yes, yes, yes. Now you're three hundred and three thousand dollars. We'll just take a nice look at these procedurally generated AI created people and select a few of them to be my scientists and select the viable eggs and find even more procedurally generated AI driven people. Okay, so we can release via the airlift. Can I just let them out? Not an aviary. <laughs> this is, I can't put them into the pen. All right, so they have to stay inside. That's unfortunate. We'll just release them. Now, can I release humans into this aviary? Oh yeah, that's a chonky guy. <laughs> that's a big fella. Looks really cool though. Reminds me of a dodo bird, which are also extinct. Like this avian reptile. Probably needs to have feathers, not gonna lie. Security rating of three. Yeah, that sounds fun. Now the problem we have is that there are literally no people at all in this entire park. So it's time to make a new one. And now we get to build a brand new beautiful park on Isla Nublar. Mmm, that looks very nice. Very satisfying, the rolling hills and the water. It'd be a shame if somebody were to remove them all. So we can have a nice, boring, empty flat land that reminds me of North Dakota with palm trees, which North Dakota doesn't have. So then we'll just build a very, very nice looking park. Yet it's still closed, but there's a few aviaries around here. The other fun thing to note is that you can combine aviaries into one giganto aviary. And thankfully there's this little secret area hidden way down here where we can do all our devious science experiments. We'll just connect a little tiny path that nobody knows about. And then we'll hide the path here with some sort of dinosaur face. Or sorry, maybe prehistoric reptile face and nobody will ever know it exists. We'll add in a few small signs to also block the path better. And people will be like, oh, I have no idea what's down there. Let's never go that way. So I'll be honest, I really don't know too much about these things, but we can like get the large ones. Oh, there are no large ones. We can get the medium ones. These ones are probably gonna eat humans better. So let's just synthesize a few of these puppies up and mine, so we'll make a bunch of these too. And whatever this guy is, we'll just assign some scientists like McCarthy here and maybe a few pterodons for good luck. But before all of those flying reptiles are done, I did make up some regular dinosaurs to put in these beautiful little pens and maybe even a spicy boy that we can throw in another pen right over here might as well make some of these prehistoric reptiles all right so the ickies are ready yeah <laughs> i love these guys they're probably my favorite marine reptile except are they actually a reptile we don't know they might be a mammal. And you know, with that, I think it's time to open up the park. We can start getting some visitors here, maybe. I don't know where they're gonna come from. Maybe just like out of the ground. Survival point just came out of nowhere. And surprise, all the workers and people wearing <laughs> military protected gear. That's a good idea. Because the Adominus might escape in a little bit. The good news is these guys are ready to release too. 
And I'm hoping they don't think eat our ickies because they're still kind of cool. Now I can delete that thing and never think about it again. I like this. We have a four and a half star rating in just like 15 minutes and 1600 guests already. Oh yeah, there is a lot of fodder here for our flying dinos. Not gonna lie, this is actually maybe one of the better parks that I've ever made. Like, it has all of the amenities and everything. So let's start selecting some of these eggs and beginning the incubation process. And by some of them, I mean all of them. And it seems to be working. Nobody's going down our path of doom. They're like, oh boy, we could fit through there, but there's menacing skulls behind it. Nice, everyone's ready to go. So I'm gonna release them to the airlift. It's probably a dumb idea, but we're gonna do it anyway. And they're inaccessible. It's not what I was planning on doing. Why is that inaccessible? It's an airlift for crying out loud. Why can I deliver it to this one? It's because it had a thing. That's annoying. Why didn't I just make all the dinosaurs there? And now we're giving flying dinos a lift. <laughs> That's stupid, I love it. And I have to say that if I went to a dinosaur park, this would be the thing that I would want to do the most. A gyrosphere around a pen full of huge herbivores. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I would probably, uh, you know, accidentally leave the path, though. Be like, hey, fellas, how are you? Nice little short stubby arms you have there. Be a shame if I were to drive around them for a little bit. Also, can I get out of this gyrosphere and ride you? Because I would totally have one of those as a pet. Oh, it's got music inside, too. That's so cool. Oh, sick. There's new Brachiosaur being delivered. And the Jeep just drove right through the water. Can I go in there? I would think it would float. Oh, look at the Aliosaur. It's drinking water. Oh, that was cool. Ah! Okay, on second thought, this game just needs VR support. And then we'd be good to go. Oh, it's so big. Oh, and the monorail's pretty sick, too. Except these are the most boring rides ever at park. Uh, I don't I don't know how this happened. <laughs> we got a we got a spare bird flopping around. Whoops. I've literally no idea how it happened. They can't break out. Maybe is it gonna attack it? I was just gonna sit here. Cause it's stamina world. That's interesting. <laughs> uh yay. <laughs> I mean maybe it's gonna is it gonna eat somebody? I kind of wanted to eat somebody. Can it eat somebody? <laughs> that's, that's the real question. What happens if it goes into the Indominus pen? That'd be even more exciting. No, he's just made a new home here. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on that little fella. But I made another experiment. Yeah, I put the Angliosaurus in the Indominus Rex pen. I mean, he just wants to play. Look at him go. Come on, buddy. I give you a snack. Oh, you just ate a goat. Oh, right inside of this feeder. Show the view. I show. Oh, that would be so sick. Watch an Indominus pop out of green stuff and be like, Om nom nom nom, I ate a goat. Yeah. Nobody's in here really to care, though. Except maybe maybe there's a person? Yeah, there was a single person in there. Ankylosaurus just chilling. He's not a big fan of carnivores either. And the Indominus literally dislikes everything. Reminds me of my sixth grade English teacher. That's your new name, Mrs. Jones. And somehow this Ankylosaurus has become the teacher's pet and won't be eaten. So I'm going to name you Kyle. <sighs> Much like Kyle. Sixth grade Kyle. Gotta love you. So I guess it's time to release all of these creatures. Oh yes, you look like you like to eat people. Wow, those things are amazing looking. I love it. That giant thing on their forehead. That's awesome. Time to release a lot more of them. And why stop there? Let's release some sources. And we've seen these guys before. Well done, friends. Welcome to the community. I'm sure you'll love it in our enclosure that was made out of just sadness. I'm hoping all of these dinosaurs don't fight each other before they can go feast on human flesh. A fight has begun because Mrs. Jones and Kyle, why would you do this? You are the teacher's pet. All right, Mrs. Jones, teach him a lesson. Or, you know, just turn around and walk the other way, like you normally did when Kyle brought something up. Kyle has an undiagnosed ailment. He got sick and is sent to the principal's office. Oh, yeah. We got quite a few flying dinos now. Well, this is really sad news. This dinosaur has dropped our park rating down to three and a half stars. Evidently, the safety rating has gone down. Don't worry, he doesn't seem to be too hungry. We'll just shoot him. Humanely, of course. And put you back in your pen. This is like a giant chicken coop. We can just collect some eggs and sell them at the local's farmer's market. Oh, they're fighting again. Nope, they're not. We have a dead dinosaur. Who died? Who died? Did Kyle die? No, Kyle's still alive. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the game's like, we killed you so dead that you're still living. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I don't see any dead dinosaurs anywhere. Like, literally, there's not a single dead dinosaur in this park. And the game's like, ah, Kyle died. 
<laughs> and now we're back to a beautiful 3,829 guests. I also can't talk. So we'll do what we know how to do best and place dinosaur skulls right on the entrance way. Nobody will be able to leave this atrocity. It would be a shame if somebody executed Order 66 and put on high escapes and all of the stormtroopers are going to find their local Jedi. I'm guessing you guys are going to be the ones who break out first. You look very irritated inside of here. It'd be funny if the Ichthys decided they were going to leave. <laughs> They're like, ah, peace out, guys. We're just going to grow legs and walk away. Evolution taught us well. Or, you know, somebody from the giant chicken coop could decide they want to break out too. Oh, no, Kyle finally died. Goodbye, Kyle. Somebody killed Kyle. It has begun. One lonely little pterodon has broken out of here. He's going to go have some fun. Also seems that the Packies have gotten in a fight, which is amazing. These things are so cool. Uh-oh. Another pterodon has escaped. Here he goes. <laughs> he found people. Look at this. Clones. He's going after them. He's going at- No, he's not. He's just going to land and look big and menacing and dangerous. And somehow guests have figured out how to escape. I don't really know how. It's not like they couldn't just walk in the grass or anything. These birds are dumb. There's a giant hole in the roof and they're like, I'm just going to fly around inside where there's no food. <laughs> Speaking of food, <laughs> this guy's found some. He likes snacks. Security rating of only three. Oh, nice. More dinosaurs have hatched. Here we go. Crash into the monorail. Go down for a landing. Oh, we got Karen. Karen's being drugged through the sand. Gonna need some essential oils to back that one up. Oh, and the full-on ragdoll moment. <laughs> like, we just have, like, four of them. This guy's just hanging out on a fence post. These guys are just walking through the forest, and everyone is grouped up over here, just sad and wondering why the world is ending. And this one's like a gargoyle that's just protecting the pathway down to the Temple of Doom. Just taking a nap. Oh, yay, this one got broken out, too. Ha <laughs> This guy's hungry. He's going after some human snacks. Or not, because they just kind of get dumb when they get around this giant building. So we better just delete this building so they don't get dumb anymore. Wonder what's going to happen to this guy. <laughs> He's gonna, just going to get boxed up and put him in a, in a cage somewhere. Oh, now they both landed and got covered up with fabric. Oh, no, we have another dead dinosaur, but these guys decided to leave. Nope, never mind. He's still sleeping on the imaginary fence post. Who died? Not sure who died, but the Triceratops decided they were going to fight it out. Wow, that was cool. Do it again. It'll be special. Oh, the third one's coming in like, hey, guys, I'm a clone of you. I would also like to lock horns and fight. Oh, that's so sick. Wow. Oh, that's cool. I love it. Cohabitation issue. They don't like having, like, three Triceratopses together. Aren't they herd critters? <laughs> They're just patrolling the skies, guarding the entrance to the temple. Oh, we're going in for the landing. You're not even... You're, you're supposed to go in for the people, dude. <laughs> you're supposed to go for the people. It actually sounds like he's landing. Like, jet fighter sound? No, I'm kidding. That would have been funny, though. They just really like landing and being lazy. Yay, it's working. <laughs> that wasn't a pterodon, though. What are you? A tropedagonthrosis. Boy, that was a tough word to say. Eat another one. Eat another one. Eat another one. Yeah. <laughs> Go get him. Yes. Oh, yes. Drag him. Drag him and pick him up. That is amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> the big old bird's like, I'm just gonna nom on it. So I suppose we should probably just release even more. <laughs> oh, grabbed another one. Oh, wow, you couldn't pick it up? Oh, you can't pick him up. That's awesome. Even that armored vest this cop had on couldn't save him. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at the mouths open. Oh, that's so cool. There's dead people laying everywhere. <laughs> Yay. I mean, oh, I'm so sorry. I wish that didn't have to happen to you, Mr. Cop. The birds are finally having fun. <laughs> They're just flying all around, just grabbing things. I guess that's what happens when there's 12 of them released. Oh, you're going to go get another one? Are you? Are you? No, he's not. But you are. Nice snack. <laughs> I wish they would eat them. I mean, what's the point of hunting if you're not going to eat your prey, right? <laughs> Fly. Oh, no. Crunch. Well, I guess that's just what happens when you release over 100 flying dinosaurs into a park. <laughs> and you don't have any security going on. Anyway, my friends, that'll do it for today's video of Jurassic World Evolution to the Electric Boogaloo times four.
Keep your stick on the ice. We'll catch you next time. I'd also like to thank all of the YouTube supporters and Patreon sponsors for supporting the channel this last month, including Splatter Sacks, Ify Sphere, Joe B, Obi John Kenobi, Fury Arrow, Doug Rules 2.0, Nerdy Geek, Pyro H, Max M, Alan H, Apollo Bunny, Otto Dave, Ben, Dicky H, Teddy Hippius, Desby, Eagle Arc, Maxer, Whippigood, Spencer T, Baron Fox, Sarnoff, Deegan, Jason M, and Rayo.